What was Bran doing in the Godswood when he walked into those ravens and went to spy on the Night King? Was something going on that we didn't see on screen? And what has Bran been up to all this time, just sitting in Winterfell? Hi everyone, this is Robert. Welcome to In Deep Geek. If you want regular insight and intelligent debate about Game of Thrones and more, then click on the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Even by Bran's standards, he has been quite mysterious this season, mostly just staring at lots of people in an unnerving way, or intervening to hurry things along. And during the Battle of Winterfell he seemed mostly absent. Partway through, he told Theon he had to go, then walked into some ravens which saw the Night King, and then that's pretty much it. We next see him as the Night King is approaching. So, what was Bran up to? I want to suggest to you that Bran was the person orchestrating all this, getting everything and everyone into the right place in order to make sure that what happened, happened. He was the only one who knew how to kill the Night King, and he manipulated events to make sure it panned out the way he saw it happening. Before we get into what he did, Let's very briefly delve into the nature of time in Game of Thrones. It seems to operate on a closed loop system. Things that happen in the future were always going to happen. You can't change them, you just need to go along with the flow of history. Hodor was always going to hold the door. His entire life and everything he ever said shows that the future was set. Throughout his adult life, he said Hodor because he was always going to have held the door in the future. So, the future is fixed, and even attempts to change it in the past make no difference, they just play their own role in making it happen. This is important because Bran, as the Three-Eyed Raven, can see into the future. In his visions we saw a fleeting glimpse of a dragon passing over King's Landing, which hasn't happened yet, for example. So, although we haven't seen him do it, it is reasonable to assume that once he had safely got back to Winterfell, Bran would have tried to see what happens with the Night King. It would be odd if he didn't. And if he had, he would have seen the Night King killed by Arya in front of the Weirwood with the Cat's Paw Dagger. And if he saw this, it explains a lot. It explains how relaxed and unengaged he is about everything. For example, because he knows how it's going to end, and why he does the things he does, because all Bran needed to do then was push things in the right direction for the future to pan out as it must. He was just playing his part. If he told anyone what their part was, they might have tried to rebel or second-guessed what they were doing. He just needed events to pan out as they must. So, let's rewind back to Season 7. Bran has escaped the Night King and is now back in Winterfell. He is the Three-Eyed Raven now, not just Bran. It's probably taken him a time to adapt to this. He seems not with it for most of the journey south, just downloading information. But once he gets to Winterfell, he can start thinking about the future and working through what he learned about the past and the future. Let's cut to one of his first meaningful interactions at Winterfell when Littlefinger gave him that dagger. I think this was the start of him planning for what happened in the Battle for Winterfell. Bran often gives people and things slightly weird looks, but what happened in that meeting with Littlefinger was on a totally different level. After it was given to him, he stared at that dagger for well over a minute of screen time, non-stop, running his fingers over the flat of the blade and gripping and ungripping the hilt. It was as if he was seeing something in that dagger. Given the context at the time, most of us thought that it was to do with that being the dagger that was used in the assassination attempt on him, but later events suggest there was more to it than that. Even the conversation that follows, still with Bran staring at the dagger, is laden with symbolism for what comes later. Littlefinger says to Bran that he must have seen things when he was north of the Wall that most men wouldn't believe. He saw the creation of the Night King. Littlefinger talks about the dagger going into someone's heart, 
like the dragonglass dagger went into the Night King's heart. He says that the dagger made Bran what he is, like the dragonglass dagger made the Night King who he was. Littlefinger shows the Valyrian steel blade and the dragonglass decorated hilt, flipping it over in his hands so Bran sees both, the opposites of dragonglass and Valyrian steel. It must have set Bran off thinking about how to uncreate the Night King, because, to be clear, it was never a matter of killing the Night King, just uncreating him. He was a being created by magic, and in order to stop his threat he had to be uncreated, reverse engineering creation. Creating the Night King required dragonglass in the heart in front of a weirwood tree, so uncreating him required Valyrian steel in his heart in front of a weirwood tree. So the Valyrian steel blade needed to be plunged into the Night King's heart in front of a weirwood tree in the exact same place that the dragonglass blade had been plunged into him before, and for that he needed someone skilled with a blade and killing people. Enter Arya. His first interaction with her after she returns is also heavy laden with hints. He tells her that he saw her at the Inn of the Crossroads. This in itself is not noteworthy. He tells a lot of people that he saw them doing various things, but usually he just leaves it there with them slightly freaked out. This time, though, he shows that he was actually quite invested in her coming home. He says, You came home? with as close to a smile as Bran has given in three seasons, then mentions that he thought she might have gone somewhere else, to King's Landing, say. Then the very next thing he does is give her that dagger, which he had brought with him apparently for that very purpose, as if this were the first and most important thing for him to do when he was with Arya again. Arya and Sansa talk about it being the dagger that was used in the assassination attempt on him, bringing to mind the idea that Bran might need saving again from being killed by someone else, and then Bran says that all that doesn't matter. He clearly has another purpose in mind for the dagger, and he gives it to Arya, because, as he says, it's wasted on a cripple. So he obviously wants that dagger to be used, and he wants it to be used by Arya because she kills people. The other thing he said in this conversation was to reference her kill list. He knows that she is a cold-hearted killer. And this is the look he gives after handing over the dagger. Again, looking at the dagger, not Arya. He clearly thinks the dagger is important. So Bran, in just a few sentences, expresses relief that Arya is there, lets her know that he knows she is an assassin now, gives her the dagger, and hints heavily that he wants it used, not just kept as an ornamental piece. And he does all this in front of the Weirwood tree, where, in Season 8, she will use it to kill or uncreate the Night King. He has set her up to play her part. And then he sets himself up to be in the right place. Let's take him at his word that the Night King will target him. That certainly seems to be the evidence of what happened in the battle. John tries to put him in the crypt, but he insists that he should be next to the Weirwood tree. So he has himself set up in front of the Weirwood tree, drawing the Night King in. Arya is in possession of the Valyrian steel blade, so the only thing missing was the Night King himself. And when the battle begins, the Night King is nowhere to be seen. The army of the dead advance, and in the godswood they can hear the battle, but no Night King. His absence is so obvious that both Danny and John abandon their positions and job of keeping an eye out for him, to get involved in the frankly less important battle between the Whites and the humans. He's out there somewhere, but not in the godswood where he will need to be for Bran's plan to work. That's the point at which Bran decides to walk into those ravens. As we noted before, the Night King may know where Bran is at all times, but Bran doesn't know where the Night King is. As he did in Season 7, he walked into an unkindness of ravens. Yes, that is the collective noun for a group of ravens, which is just perfect. But he walked into some ravens and went looking for the Night King. 
He didn't know where he was. He had to look to make sure his plan was on track. I think the same thing happened in this episode. Bran has got it all set up. He is next to the weirwood tree, Arya has the cat's paw dagger, and so on. But the Night King hasn't shown, so Bran just checks to see what's going on. As it turns out, it acts as a kind of challenge or spur to the Night King. He gestures and the whites move forward to lie across the burning trench and charge towards the walls of Winterfell. Momentum was restored. I know that some have speculated that perhaps there was some kind of communication or collaboration between Bran and the Night King at this point, but the simple fact is, why would the Night King bother with that? He had the perfect plan already. An army that just kept growing, that, but for Bran and Arya's intervention, would surely have rolled south all the way across Westeros. They were unstoppable, but for one moment that Bran clearly made happen. No, there's no evidence that Bran was ever anything but opposed to the Night King. So, there it is. What Bran was doing in the Godswood and in walking into those ravens was waiting. Waiting for history to play out, having set it all in motion. It's not as exciting or much of a plot twist, but it's what the evidence is pointing towards right now. Bran was manipulating everyone, as Bloodraven did before him, and Three-Eyed Ravens have surely done throughout history. Please join me for live streams on Thursdays and Sundays throughout the season, where I'll be discussing what's going on in the show with special guests and making predictions about future episodes. If you'd like to see more of my Game of Thrones Season 8 videos, please click on this link on the left of the screen. Or if you'd like to support the channel, or get some exclusive content or priority access on my live streams, please click on the link to my Patreon page on the right of the screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.